The first North Korean troops have probably already reached the front line in the Kursk region. As Forbes reports, citing intercepted radio communications from Russian military personnel, the invaders are secretly moving North Korean soldiers in the direction of the Kursk salient, which is under the control of the Ukrainian armed forces. Intercepted communications by Ukrainian intelligence confirm that thousands of North Korean troops have begun to arrive. In one conversation, two Russian military officials spoke of a Kamaz truck driver named Andrei Sveridenko, who was stopped at the entrance to Kursk. Several such vehicles were detained by Russian military police on the highway in the Kursk region since one of the Kamaz trucks had a civilian license plate. The fact that the vehicle had no combat purpose caused concern among security officials. The publication noted that the deployment of North Korean forces in Kursk is not reflected in the documents. Sveridenko's batch of North Korean soldiers was intended for the 810th Marine Brigade of the Russian Navy, which is trying to repel the Ukrainian offensive on the eastern edge of the Kursk, near the village of Ruskaya Konopelka. Ukrainian drones and artillery are holding off the Russians for now, Forbes writes. The publication recalled that Marine units are known for their brutality and poor discipline. For example, the 155th Marine Brigade recently captured and executed nine Ukrainian drone operators. According to Ukrainian intelligence, about 12,000 military personnel have already been transferred from the DPRK to Russia, including three generals and 500 officers. This is also confirmed by intelligence services of a number of other countries. On October the 26th, President Volodymyr Zelensky stated that the Russian authorities are determined to continue the war against Ukraine, and therefore soldiers from North Korea could be on the battlefield in the near future. Ukrainian military expert Pavel Lakichuk says that in the coming days, Russia may increase the number of North Korean troops to participate in military operations in the Kursk region where the Ukrainian armed forces have begun active assaults. According to the Kremlin's plan, these forces should compensate for the losses of the Russian army. The Kremlin has tested dozens of different ways to compensate for the losses of Russian army personnel at the front. These North Korean soldiers are the first sign of activity in this direction, which may intensify over time. The expert noted, if we are talking about 11 to 12,000 North Korean soldiers, then there will be enough for two to three weeks of combat operations taking into account daily losses. But the very beginning of Russia's use of North Korean troops is a serious signal, and it is bad, Lakichuk noted. If Putin and Kim Jong-un manage to scale up this experience of attracting DPRK troops to 100 to 300,000 soldiers in the future, then it will be possible to do without conducting a partial mobilization. Russia and the United States traded accusations on Iran's role in unrest in Mideast at the United Nations on Monday. Addressing the Security Council, Russian Ambassador Vasily Nebenzia said Israel is intentionally raising tensions with Iran, despite signals from Tehran that the country is ready to refrain from further spiraling confrontation. Nebenzia accused the U.S. of shirking its responsibility as a permanent member of the Security Council by assisting in Israel's attacks on Iran. 
We're call on the United States to be responsible L and allow the main UN body to use all of their tools at their disposal disposal to stop the conflict. The US pushed back, saying Russia's support for Iran comes because of an increasing reliance on Iranian weapons to sustain its war in Ukraine. We have the collective responsibility to prove Iran wrong, even in the face of action by one member of this council, Russia. We must impose costs for supporting terrorism and undermining international peace and stability, U.S. Ambassador Linda Thomas-Greenfield said. The United Kingdom, meanwhile said Iran must stop its aggression in the region and said it is gravely concerned by the legislation voted on in the Israeli Knesset which seeks to curtail UNRWA's ability to operate in Gaza. В этом контексте глубоко обеспокоена непрекращающаяся и нарастающая взрывоопасная эскалация между Израилем и Исламской Республикой Иран, которая создает реальные угрозы стабильности и безопасности в регионе. Настойчиво призываем все вовлеченные стороны к сдержанности, прекращению насилия и недопущению развития событий по катастрофическому сценарию. Всем протагонистам важно найти в себе силы и мудрость выйти наконец из этой спирали неконтролируемой эскалации. А после серии политических ликвидаций, включая убийство главы из полсовета Хамас Хании, генерального состаря Хизбаллы Насралы и ряда других лидеров противостоящих Израилю движений, в Западном Иерусалиме пытаются всеми силами втянуть в конфронтацию и Иран, проявляющий исключительную, исключительную в данных обстоятельствах сдержанность. Сложно избавиться от ощущения, что в Западном Иерусалиме сознательно идут на обострение, несмотря на сигналы Тегерана, о готовности воздержаться от дальнейшего раскручивания спирали конфронтации. При этом призываем Соединенные Штаты ответственно отнестись к своим обязанностям постоянного члена Совета Безопасности и позволить, наконец, главному органу ООН, ответственному за поддержание международного мира и безопасности, использовать весь имеющийся у него инструментарий для остановки конфликта и выполнения имеющихся профильных резолюций по ближневосточному регулированию. Iran requested this meeting today. Its representative seeks to gaslight and deflect to claim the role of victim while continuing to sow chaos across the region. And because Russia is increasingly reliant on Iranian weapons to sustain its illegal, unprovoked war of aggression against Ukraine, Iran believes this council will have no choice but to look the other way. We have the collective responsibility to prove Iran wrong, even in the face of obstruction by one member of this council, Russia. We must impose costs for supporting terrorism and undermining international peace and stability. So today, our message must be clear. We will not allow the region's future to be dictated by Tehran and its proxies, whose actions before on and since October 7th have put millions of innocent civilians at risk. Today, the United States message for Israel remains clear. We will always help secure its people and territory from Iran and its terrorist proxies and partners. Our message for Iran remains clear as well. Should it choose to undertake further aggressive acts against Israel or U.S. personnel in the region, there will be severe consequences. We will not hesitate to act in self-defense. Iran should not respond. All sides must exercise restraint. No good can come of pouring more fuel on the flames of this escalating cycle of violence. We have been clear that Iran must end this support. All our efforts now should be on breaking the cycle of violence. Let me be clear, a regional war is in no one's interest. We're also gravely concerned by Israeli Knesset legislation voted on today, which seeks to curtail UNRWA's ability to operate. Israel must abide by its obligations 
and ensure UNRWA can continue to provide essential services to those suffering in Gaza and the West Bank.